you know, th those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. Breaking free of Earth's gravity turns out to be a lot simpler than breaking free of the regulatory state. 2023 is here, but SpaceX's orbital journey is still troubled by an ancient issue known as the FAA. Let's dive into it further in today's episode of Metatech. This past summer, the FAA published a 183-page study listing more than 75 measures that SpaceX must follow before flying the Starship spacecraft from its launch site in Boca Chica, Texas. That paper is short in comparison to the almost 400-page environmental impact assessment released by the FAA on the same launch pad when SpaceX first purchased it in 2012. The National Environmental Policy Act or NEPA required both reports. The 1970 law mandates government entities to investigate the environmental consequences of their acts, whether they're approving the construction of a new roadway, a new coal mine, or a rocket launch. However, through time, the law has evolved into an obstacle to advancement. The average environmental impact statement, the most thorough level of assessment authorized by NEPA, takes four and a half years to complete and is approximately 661 pages long, compared to 2.2 years and 150 pages back in the 1970s. The opportunity for public input on what occurs when private property allows NIMBYs and other obstructionists to bring projects to a crashing halt even when regulators themselves would rather remain out of the way. Projects that make it through the NEPA review process are rarely undamaged. In the case of SpaceX, many of the actions necessary for its Boca Chica location are constantly tied to environmental protection. For example, the corporation must submit studies on the Mexican-American War and the Civil War that describe events that occurred within the area that their space missions may affect. It will also be required to construct five public signage in English and Spanish explaining that history. SpaceX will also be required to provide $5,000 per year to the Peregrine Fund, which works to protect endangered species, as well as the Friends of Laguna Atascosa National Wildlife Refuge's adoption of an ocelot program. The latter contribution will go toward special events to raise ocelot awareness. Critics of NEPA claim that it protects the status quo rather than the environment adding unnecessary red tape to individuals seeking to accomplish new and exciting things. SpaceX must redirect part of the time and energy it would have spent extending humanity's reach into space to preparing studies on 19th century wars. NEPA, which raises the expense of terrestrial road and rail construction, also impedes space travel. Congress may have established the gentlest relationships on the planet. More significantly, even if SpaceX implements those adjustments, there is no certainty that the business would be granted a launch license for Starship. SpaceX must complete surveys, educate employees, and record the majority of the 70-plus mitigations before the FAA will review their submission. Even a little explosion on the ground was enough for the FAA to postpone Starship for a few months. That's one of the reasons SpaceX tests are so slowly and meticulously. According to Mark Karasich, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Artemis Campaign Development, the licensing quotation is still ahead of us. Many of the FAA's 75 words, according to Greg Autry, a commercial space industry expert, are extremely minor, non-engineering criteria that can be accomplished concurrently with others. However, he stated that Musk considers everyone doing the job to be a clone of himself or a genius who never stops working. Professor of Engineering Systems at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Oliver Dweck also expressed doubt that SpaceX could complete all of this work in just a few months. If everything is completed and the FAA is still not satisfied, will SpaceX still receive a launch license? No one can know for sure. That's why Elon Musk has said these FAA rocket launch regulations are broken. He tweeted, quote, Unlike its aircraft division, which is fine, the FAA space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. Their rules are meant for a handful of expendable launches per year from a few government facilities. Under those rules, humanity will never get to Mars. End quote. This means that the FAA's requirements for space launches and rocket testing are out of date. The complicated procedure is intended to enforce safety requirements from the days when rockets were launched only a few times a year, rather than an aggressive program like SpaceX's Starship. It was expected that things might go wrong because it was a test, but the FAA does not see it that way. 
That's why Musk claims the existing standards were designed for a few disposable launches, as an expendable rocket would never have a landing problem in testing because they don't land at all. Instead of accepting that the Fireball was a successful test that provided data for SpaceX to enhance the design and operating procedures, current standards oblige them to regard it as an accident that must be investigated. What this demonstrates about the FAA is that politicians and the bureaucracy itself require reform. Technology advances quickly, and we need the agency to execute the task that voters and their representatives assign to them. It is designed to ensure the safety of air operations and should not be mired in regulatory and legal mud. Even on subjects for which Congress delegated full authority to the agency, there is a culture of meticulous deliberation that needs to be tempered with common sense. It is usual for government regulators of all types to be behind the times the hassle to work with. So this isn't a problem that the FAA deals with solely. Much of it isn't the responsibility of any single administrator, regulator, lawyer, or official. They're all trapped in a broken system that prevents the agency from doing its job. This would not be a big deal if it were all minor. However, modern technology saves everything. When we can't save time and energy with new technologies, because old heads at the federal government is bogged down by a slew of contradictory and out-of-date policies, real people suffer needlessly. Perhaps Congress could enact legislation to establish a common-sense department, and each regulatory agency that regulates businesses and hobbyists could contact that department to have the terrible and obsolete rules immediately reviewed. This department can be given the authority to issue a temporary rule change in any case where they perceive a lack of common sense. And those interim regulations are in effect until the normal regulatory process can integrate the adjustment. If something like that is possible, space corporations will be able to get things done and the public will be safer as a result. We recently came across an interesting tweet on Twitter that made us ponder a bit. Zafad was who tweeted and we quote, Other countries would give an arm and a leg to have a company that's as disruptive and as ambitious as SpaceX. I'm not saying skirt the rules, but government agencies should show some excitement at what's about to happen. Be eager to participate in once-in-a-generation events. It to admit, this pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's vid. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. We'd love to hear your input on this matter and we'll be responding to a lot of your comments. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now. Till the next video drop, you all take care.